meeting with oh, you. Yeah. But um, yeah, just like for the next, like the whole time I was out there, it was a uh, very trippy. Trippy. Yeah. All right. Pop in here. Get this out. Oh, oh there we go. <clears throat> I do it for Terry's Barbecue. Terry's Barbecue, man. All right, here we go. And three, two, one, and what's up, peeps? Welcome back to the Live Love Live podcast. I am Marcus McDuffie, and I'm here with my co-host, Sean. What's up, Sean? How you doing, Marcus? Good to see you again. You Glad too. to be back in this virtual space together. I know. I always love seeing the redwoods. Um, it's the closest yeah. to being outdoors that you'll get me. So <laughs> We'll change that. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, what we wanted to talk about today, and, and this was inspired by something that came up recently in one of our coaches meeting, which is uh, one of our core values at ION, and that is stay fit, right? And for us, stay fit actually goes way beyond just what happens in the gym, right? So it actually goes stay fit, P-M-E-S, um, and that means physical, mental, emotionally, and spiritually. Those are the four big columns. If we're not staying fit in all of these, there's parts of our life that are going to suffer and we're not going to yeah. be able to be fully happy, fully expressed to show up for people like we want. And what came up in the meeting was um, while it's all fine and dandy, we have to be realistic with our members because you all are balancing, you know, kids, community events, busy work schedules, taking care of your parents, all yeah. of this stuff is on your plate, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't take care of you because those people suffer. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to dive into um, a couple strategies that we use to, you know, to really stay on top of those four pillars in our lives. And um, hopefully it inspires you all to kind of, you know, take shoot or take knowledge on, uh, or sorry, or take action on, you know, doing this in your life as well. So, uh, Sean, do you want to kick off with this one with you first? Or you, would you want me to start here? Either one works. Yeah, yeah I can start. Definitely. Um, you know, we've talked about habit a little bit in the past and um, I, I think, for me again kind of developing good bases in each of these pillars is honestly sometimes the hardest part yeah. getting the ball rolling like we've talked about um and i think some of the things that i personally did and some of the things i, I talked to clients about is it's kind of funny and i think we'll get more into it as this this little episode goes on but it's the idea of making time for things but then making sure that you follow through with the time that you've made for those things which can be so hard right but i think at a certain point you really have to draw a line in the sand and kind of switch the way you look at that time almost in a way that, that you talked about where it's like if i don't prioritize this 30 minutes to an hour for myself maybe i spend more time doing other things that are important but how am i showing up for those things to your point right exactly. um and, and, you know, I think specifically with a lot of the members that, that we work with and that I work with and I talk to, there are so many different strings that are pulling you in different directions, kids, career, family, chores, all these crazy things. Um, and I think the biggest thing that I came to was I can do all those things, but how am I being present and showing up in those things? And what I found is that the, the, the man that I wanted to be and the man that I was in those situations was only as good as the time that I spent working on myself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's a, a big piece on there. Like one of um, one of my old mentors, he always, like it was a very simple saying of just do what you said you were going to do. Yeah. Like, I think that's one of the most powerful things that you can, um, that you can do for yourself or the way that you yeah. treat yourself is just do what you said you were going to do. And it's very, it's much you know harder than it sounds, but I think it's there's so much power in that easy saying, and yeah, like you know you're right. It really is um, you know you're trying to burn the candle on all ends, and you're pouring into the work bucket, you're pouring into the community, right. bucket, you're pouring into your kids, you're pouring into your parents, but if you step back, if you're not pouring into you, hey, like your kids can feel that you know that you're not really taking care of yourself. Right. And, and I just wanted to add to that too. You know, I think that a lot of the times we, we talked about this a little bit with nutrition, shout out to that episode. If you haven't listened to that, that was a good one. But, you know, I think that again, thinking about 
not being perfect in the pursuit of things when things get tough. So yeah. there have been days for me where I, I mean, I try to train and I put that in front of these because that can mean a lot of different things every day because it's important to me because it helps me mentally and physically, emotionally, all these pillars we're talking about. But some days I'm not going to do an hour and a half workout. I'm not going to do yeah. an hour workout. I might not even touch a weight. But to me, training is just the action of showing up and making yourself better in some way physically speaking, right? So am I better from an hour walk? Am I, is my headspace more clear, right? And it's, and it's not even about doing it perfectly. It's just, again, respecting that time that you put for yourself and doing something relating to that as simple or complex as you have the, the bandwidth for, you know? Yeah. And I think that's, um, that'll bleed into, you know, the thing that I want to touch on today, but, you know, I, I want to also tap yeah. on before we go forward, just uh, you know, I fully realize that, you know, neither of us have children just yet. And that'll shift the yeah. story. But a lot of what we talk about today is it's not really based off of our own lives in that case. No. It's just based off of us coaching and having conversations with people that are, you know, in that in those shoes for the yeah. last couple of years and seeing over and over like there's a, you know, there's a, a divide of people that like, hey, they're doing something, even if it isn't, they're not running the marathon every day, but they're taking yeah. steps. And just like what that does for them, I think um, the, the point I wanted to bring up was this whole idea of non-negotiables or fail-safes. I think yeah. there's so much power in that because if we really look at it, it doesn't actually matter as much how far you take the thing. It kind of matters more of how far it feels like you're taking it. Right. And right. By that, right. Um, you can work out four days a week. And if you're like, oh, I should be doing five, you're going to feel like shit, you know, yeah. or you could work out two days a week and you could be really proud. You're like, oh, my goal is to work out at least once a week. And then that's really pouring into your bucket. That's how you show up better for all these things in your life. You want to totally. be a parent. You want to be great at work. You want to show up for your employees, your staff. You want to show up for your community. And that starts with putting something in your bucket first. You're you're being, you're doing them and yourself a bigger disservice than you may see. So what I want to talk yeah. about, and, um, you know, we've talked about this as well in a couple of our quarterly meetings, is that whole idea of non-negotiables. Um, yeah. Which are basically, uh, for those of you listening, like non-negotiables are, hey, no matter what, I'm going to do this amount. And for me, yeah. you know, for workouts, I'm interested to hear yours as well. Like. For me, my most yeah. throughout the week are very easy. I am yeah. going to drink eight ounces of water every day I wake up. Yep. I'm going to work out at least three times a week, every week, no matter what. Some days, that's in the gym, five days a week. Other times, that's, hey, three times a week, I did 10 push-ups. And a lot yeah. of them, you know, I meditate for at least 30 seconds a day. And that's it. Like those are my non-negotiables. If I'm hitting those on a consistent basis, I'm pouring into my bucket and then I show up way better for everyone else, you know? Yeah. So yeah, for you, uh, I know we've, we've talked about some of this and you're big in that. Yeah. So. It's funny. It's, I have it right in front of me. I was trying to get it off the wall, but the post-it note is completely stuck to the wall now. So that's how you know I've been doing it for a while. But I have it uh, on my desk that um, I sit at every morning and every night before I go to bed, I, I sit at the desk too. And um, basically, I took the same approach. I just look at it as my perfect day, right? Um, and I have seven unique things that I try to hit every day. But here's the thing. Not every day is going to be a perfect day. So even if I get three out of seven, that's a good day, <laughs> you know? So a lot of times, you know, you're just shooting for good days. And, you know, my perfect day is to write, to read, and to reset or reflect, uh, to get into nature, you know, spend some sort of quality time with the people I love. Um, that's a big one for me. And again, quality time doesn't mean quantity time all the time. You yeah. know, sometimes quality time is, you know, it might be 30 minutes, but how am I showing up for that time, Right. Um, I'm a big food guy. So great food is on my perfect day. Some sort of training, you know, being of service to others and then kind of ordering the next day. So I always try at the end of the day to look to what's next and make sure that's written out and ready. Cause again, that just helps me string together perfect days. You know, you know, I, I like that. I think, um, you know, Joe Hashi, he has his big yeah. and his big three every day are what's one thing I can do for my relationship with his wife and his yep. kids what's one thing I can do for my body and what's one thing that I can do for my like 
you know, mental, emotional side. For him, yeah. more mental side, not really emotional. But, um, yeah. <laughs> and so he just does that. And some days it is like a, you know, two hour ruck. And other days it's, he does like a 10 minute walk. And I think a lot of yeah. our members, um, you know, they fall into that. The black and white thinking, it makes it harder for you to actually become what you want to become. But it's also, it's self-serving. Like if you live in black and white and you make yourself live that way, it's a lot easier to give up. It's a lot easier to give up. Um, and I think, you know, one of the best things I heard about habits too is like habits, if you're not doing them, divorce them. You know, it's not worth the mental energy yeah. to keep banging your head into the wall being like, I set up, so I had a goal a while ago. It was like read an hour and a half a day, right? Because I was really on a kick and, and I was I would get it done. I'd miss it. And then I just feel like crap the rest of the day. And so I kept missing it, kept missing, kept missing. I was like, I got to divorce it. I got to get rid of it. And so I didn't get rid of reading, but I set a very minimal goal of like, you know, 10 minutes. Did I sit down and read for 10 minutes? I usually read for more than that. Right. But that's, again, just that strategy of, of understanding the poles of life and like, how do I balance everything? Because at the end of the day, that's what makes a good habit is it's balanced in life. It doesn't drag you in one direction or the other. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Never on the sides of the spectrum somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Uh, dope, my peeps. Well, that's all for today on there. Um, so I encourage you all to go out before you you know close this podcast app. Just write down one for each category. Physically, what is my non-negotiable? How am I going to try to pour into that? Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, how am I going to try to pour into that in a way that, like we talked about, isn't gargantuan. It's doable even on your most stressful worst day. Yeah. Um, Sean, any closing comments on things? No, I think that's the best way to do it is just, you know, write that list from the perspective of a million things that have gone wrong. What am I capable of doing in some capacity every day and then build from that? But again, just building those baseline habits and, and stringing together consistent days of doing it is, is the best way to build consistency, momentum and reach those big, scary goals, you know? Hell yeah. do my peeps. Well, hey, if you enjoyed listening today, um, you know, feel free to share it with a friend or give us a little rating on Spotify. Uh, if you're not currently an ION member and you're like, wow, I kind of like what these people are doing, uh, just check us out <laughs> at www.iontraining.com and you can try us out for your first week on me. Wow. All right. You all have a good week. All right. Have a good one.